More than 26,000 students signed up to get their COVID-19 jabs after bookings for this group opened today. Now that is over half of those taking their O, N and A levels this year who get priority to register. Glenda Chong spoke with Education Minister Chan Chun Singh. Today is the first day of the vaccination for uh, registration for our children. So because we know that some parents might have some concerns with the safety of the vaccines, some parents might also be concerned with the timing because some of their children might be doing exams. So we weren't exactly sure uh, of the take-up rate. But I must thank all the educators who have worked very closely with the parents to achieve what we have uh, been able to do for today, which is that more than uh, half of the students whom we have invited to register for their vaccination have done so today over the last few hours. So what was the specific target that you were hoping to reach, especially during this um, June school holidays? It wasn't so much a specific target. Our goal was really to offer to all the students that are eligible medically to do so and we hope that they will sign up as soon as possible because that will allow us to create a safer environment for everyone before they return back to school. So we want to achieve as high a number as possible. Well, you mentioned that you wanted them to take it up, but why the urgency to vaccinate students, especially since their risk of serious illness from COVID is supposedly less than older people? Uh, well, on that count, we are. Uh, we won't say that the risk of to our children is any less than to the adults. But what we know is that from the feedback from the parents is that we are all parents. If any one of our children get ill, I think we are doubly concerned. In fact, many of the adults told us that uh, they are less concerned about they themselves, but they are much more concerned about the health of their children, especially the younger children. So this is why I think there's such an overwhelming response to make sure that our children are safe. And in particular, I think it's also very, very encouraging to hear feedback that we also want to place special priority or give special priority to the special education uh, students. So this reflects the kind of values that we have in society that we want to take care of the most vulnerable ones amongst us first. So I'm very cheered by that. Minister, you mentioned there are a lot about parents' concerns. So how would you address their concerns about the safety of the vaccine then? I think our parents are very mature. They go online, they read the materials, and they know uh, at least two data points, two very important data points. The first is that before we approve the use of the vaccine, we have gotten the available scientific evidence to assure ourselves that this is something that is safe for our children before we allow it to be used in the country. Now the second very important data point is that we are not the first country to roll out the vaccine for the younger children. In fact, countries like the United States, Canada and Israel have all rolled out such programs as well. So that gives us more data points to have greater confidence in the use of the vaccine and the safety of the vaccine. Minister, I want to look at schools and the role they play in the vaccination and how will the younger students who are not eligible to be accommodated, you know, get extra safety measures then? I think in this fight with the COVID-19 virus, we must always remember that it is a multi-dimensional challenge and we cannot just depend on one particular tool in our arsenal, so to say. Uh, so even with vaccination, we must continue to maintain the safe management measures. We must also continue to uphold our personal hygiene and hygi and the cleanliness of our environment. So there's a whole suite of things that we need to do, including wearing of masks, practicing uh, safe distancing measures, especially for higher risk activities. So I won't say that we just depend on vaccine. I think as what the Prime Minister have said, you know, going forward, we must be prepared that the virus can become endemic in our society and we will need to have much more testing much faster tracing capabilities and much higher rate of vaccination uh, as far as possible. Minister, there's also, we also understand that there are dedicated vaccination centres for students. So why create that, especially for them? Besides leveraging on the network of uh, vaccination centres throughout the island in the various community centres, we wanted to have four additional vaccination centres three of which in the ITE and one in the Refers Convention Centre to increase the 
accessibility or to improve the accessibility for all our students. And because these four centres are dedicated to the students in our system, it will allow our system, uh, students to have greater assurance of access for the vaccines and they can do it conveniently across different parts of the island. Um, Minister, you mentioned there this um, it's a multi-pronged approach. So how do we emphasize to students, especially the younger ones, that vaccination doesn't mean it's 100% immunity and that they still need to take the measures like, you know, safe distancing and that mask, that they're still important? You are absolutely right. We have to keep emphasizing this. The very important thing that we must remember is this. The virus is mutating. It will keep challenging us in the way we manage the virus and how we control it, how we provide a safe environment for ourselves. And we must never be complacent and fall into the trap thinking that one set of methods will always be able to cater to a mutating virus. As the virus mutates, we must also update our ways which we control the disease and how to protect ourselves. So at this point in time, vaccination is a key part of our strategy. The practicing the safe management measures, keeping our self safe, wearing of masks, keeping our safe distancing measures, all these are necessary suite of preventive measures. And in addition to the preventive measures, we must also be able to test, test more, test more quickly so that we can quickly isolate the cluster if it emerges while allowing the rest of society to continue to function as normally as possible. That's perhaps a new normal that we have to get used to, that even if there are sporadic cases in different parts of our society, to the extent possible, we will isolate it and only need to disrupt the activities in those affected sectors while allowing the rest of the society and the economy to function as normally as possible. Education Minister Chan Chun Singh there speaking to Glenda Chong.